Okay, before you know that deep set panic sets in, first quiz. You know, the quiz store is going to get dropped. Tomorrow's the last day to drop the class to avoid a W. What do I do? Don't ask me. Don't ask me because I don't have control over what you're going to do for the next 15 weeks in a day. I can't control, I'm sorry, but I cannot control anxiety. I know it's there. Your emotional state when you do a math test because you hated it in your entire life. We got to get past those things. I haven't talked to half of my family for now. I'm not having to talk to them. I haven't we haven't hung out, nor do I think we'll hang out again, but it's just one of those things I'm never gonna get past. That's what I'm gonna save my emotion for. For something that has an emotional attachment. I'm mad. I have a visceral attachment to writing. Makes me sick. Steel pipe it makes me sick. So I put it off at all costs. But writing doesn't hate me. So it's a waste of my time, but one of those things hard to get past. I want to point out that and this is not like I told you so, but I am telling you. Those are the, you know, in a sense, the first quiz questions. Open notes. Okay, make sure you know your rules of exponents. You shouldn't have to have the rules of exponents out. You should know them. But I don't like quiz. You get to have them out. Your power. Power to If you use calculator, you don't have to have it, but save a little bit of time. If you've actually worked them out you know, so far. Um, our two practice pages. So this whole second question looks a lot, a lot like that one. Looks a lot like this one, but it doesn't have as much stuff. This third one over here looks a lot like this one. This one has a little bit more going on to it. But I also, in class, when you guys ask to see problems, I give you kind of an enhanced version of this one. Okay. And likewise, you have examples like number seven here and number eight for the bonus. And for the other one, there's more practical. You'll see on the quiz, there's, there was one like this. There's, didn't have a negative exponent, there was something like this. Didn't have a negative exponent, but something like this. Okay, this one, like, you know, looks like that. And then bonus fraction, eight, nine, and 10, bonus type. That, I, I do the, I do the, uh, Quiz practices and reviews that are set up just like your exam, just like your quizzes. So you can prepare mentally and with, with the knowledge, the practice. I've seen this before. I've got this. But we have to make sure we understand a couple of things. Number one, it was four problems. And again, this is not trying to, you know, I already got a bad quiz score. Why are you going to make me feel even worse? It's not that it's not about that. It's about where we need to be. Where we need to be. Where we need to be is questions one through four, you should be able to do. We're going to be in the land of the two bonus questions. That's where we spend our time. But we can't get to the land of the bonus questions as a as a everyday life unless we can do the, uh, the rules of exponents first. We've got to build the foundation, strengthen the foundation before we can move on. So I'm not trying to, you know, make anybody feel that. And the reason why I'm like going through all that, you know, nobody told me to. It's not that people throw around that W word. I'm talking about that. I'm just I, you, I've been in your seat. I've gotten a bad score on something before. 
I ain't that bright. All the other math teachers around here are, they're a lot smarter. Old saying goes, mathematicians peak at 25. And after that, it's all downhill. The quote, my calculator, or one of my math analysis professors from the state, if they peak at 25 and it's downhill after that, I've been going downhill a lot longer than you little MF who's been alive. And he didn't say end that verse, but I, I tried not to. My dad said, okay. But the idea is we've got to get it down. It was four problems. Let's stay. I let you stay, but it's got to be because you're going to have a test of 20 problems on it. And if you're stuck on the first one, maybe you move to the second one. You've got to whittle out the things you can do, get as many points as you can do. If you need to, if it's just sitting there and you're in that panic state, it's okay. Step outside, get a drink of water, come back, and then just clear your head. As soon as I throw that piece of paper down in front of you, it all begins. Maybe you need to step out and then come back in and say, all right, now I'm you know, sitting in front of you instead of that piece of paper, you know, waiting for you to start. You're stepping in and sitting down like you're going to start. Okay. So, so order of operations, there's x two x that doesn't simplify x to the fourth times y that doesn't simplify. 5x squared, y to the fourth, that doesn't simplify, but it's raised to a power. And then a y squared. So, I'm going to raise this to the third power. Everything else is just going to kind of wait for this to finish its job. <laughs> 5 to the third, and I'm going to do this right here, because what I want you to be able to do is going to be 5 to the third, x squared, to the third, y to the fourth, to the third. Everything in here is to the third, which means this next one is going to be 125. x to the sixth, y to the twelfth, and then y squared. Five to the third, I saw 15. I saw... I saw 25 because you think you're seeing a 2, but it's 5 to the 3rd. I'll see the 5 get raised to the 3rd, but the other 2 not get raised to the 3rd. So only 5 gets raised to the 3rd, and you still have x squared and y to the 4th. Or I'll see the variables taken care of, but forget about 2 to the 5. This is not about me, it's about you. Neatness needs to count for you. Because some of you are just kind of either all over the place. A sharp pencil is easier for me to read than, I don't know, it looked like somebody's using the side of their pencil to do the problem. Because it was all kind of smudged. I can't make out what was going on. Really work on. This is just going to benefit you and where you want to go. If nobody's ever gave a crap about what you turned in and what it looked like, you need to. You need to, because if it's not working out, it's incorrect. Maybe the only thing you got to do is clean up your, your writing so you can actually see what you're working with. Whatever wasn't working, don't keep doing it. So now, everything's been taken care of. Now, the advice I gave you before was, let's combine, let's rewrite it where all the coefficients are right next to each other. We have a 2, and that's going to be 125. We'll do this in 2 times that 125. Don't go to the next answer. Finish everybody else out. Then for the x's, this one got this one was forgotten about. 
but there's an x, there's an x to the fourth, there's an x to the sixth. So all the x's have been accounted for. And then the y's, y to the first times a y to the twelfth times a y to the seventh. Now, look at what I've just written. I mean, you can't use different colors when you're doing the quiz because then we can't erase your notes. Organization. So far, I'm only, that's two steps. And now the third step is just going to finish it up. Two times 125, that's 250. X times X to the four times X to the six. We add the X function. One plus four is five. Five plus six is x to the eleven. I saw lots of x to the tenths. I saw x to the tenth because this one got left behind. That one just got left behind, got all forgotten about. Okay? And then y times y to the twelfth is y to the thirteenth. Y to the thirteenth times y to the second is y to the fifteenth. And I think I saw either Y to the 14th or Y to the 13th. So either this one was getting left out, left behind, or that one got left behind. If there are bigger mistakes like X squared to the third is an eight, you're not doing two to the third is power to the power. You multiply two times three. Four X and Y to the fourth Q is not four to the third, it's power to a power, four times three is four. So that's where other mistakes came. Okay. That's all you did. That one's that that's that first thing. Well, the next one. So the good news is that 150x to the eighth. That's not going to change because I'm going to simplify up here. Now, up here in the numerator, we're going to cube negative three to the third, and we're going to cube x squared. This is what I hope you, you want to be able to do. You should be able to go from negative three to an odd power, so it's going to be negative. Three to the third is 27. So that's negative 27. X squared to the third is X to the sixth. Power to a power. Just like we had over here. Multiply two times three. So it's this. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to, but it's okay to do. Negative three gets raised the negative as well to the third power, and your x squared is getting raised to the third power. A negative three times a negative three times a negative three is a negative 27. And that's why you have your power gates. They have three to the third right in front of you, or at least you've done three to the third. <laughs> And then here, I, I make a big deal about is the parentheses yes or no? The negative is in parentheses, we're going to square, is it going to be positive or negative? Positive, it's even. We're going to square the negative into two. Anytime you have a negative to an even power, it comes out positive. Because I have an even number of negatives, and whenever you multiply two negatives, it's positive. If it's odd, like over here, negative to a three, that's an odd power. So it's negative. So what I would hope we do is we're going to square the negative five. So negative five times negative five, positive 25. And then power to a power, six times two, that's x to the 12. You shouldn't, or you don't have to show the step where you go, all right, we're going to cube this, cube this, cube this, cube, or square this, square this.
You want to be able to go from here to here. And then the denominator is still 150 x to the over. Before you start reducing anything, okay, clean up the numerator. Just like I did some reorganizing here, is my final answer going to be positive or negative? To be negative. I have a negative times a positive, so it's going to be a negative. I have the 27 times the 25, and then I have an x to the 6 times the x to the 12. 27 times x to the 6 times 25 times x to the 12. All over 150 x to the 8. Now, it's perfectly fine if you write 150 x to the 8, but start to anticipate. We know we're going to have to reduce our fraction. We know we're going to need common factors. So if I'm looking at the numerator, I got a 27 and a 25, and I want to reduce it with 150, well, the first thing I notice is 150 is a multiple of 25. Okay? 25 goes into 150 six times, so it's six times 25. So whether you use parentheses or, you know, multiplication. So I still have a negative. The 25 is reduced. Now I have 27 over 6. So the common factor for 27 and 6 is 3. This is 9 times 3, and this is 2 times 3. So the 3s are going to reduce. So in the numerator, I'm negative 9. In the denominator, I have a 2. And then x to the 6 times x to the 12 is going to be x to the 18. We add the exponents over x to the 8. And there was, you know, in both classes, maybe a handful, a hand, one and a half handfuls, where that was stopped. You have to simplify down to just one variable of x sum. Well, now we're dividing. When we divide, we subtract the exponents. So which one is bigger? 18. So x to the 8 is going to go to x to the 18, leaving x to the 10. So when we clean up this, we have negative 9x to the 10 all over 2. When you look at the problem and you see this huge thing in front of you, you can't do it all in one bite. Smaller pieces, one piece at a time. You've got to find something that's going to alleviate the anxiety. You know how to do, well, you know how to multiply. If it was just this, 2 times x times x, 4 times y, so 2 x times x to the fourth, x to the fifth, and you have a y. That's just one small piece. The next small piece, raise this to the third. 5 to the third times 125. x squared to the third, that's an x to the sixth. y to the fourth to the third, y to the twelfth. And then don't forget the y squared. Just one piece of the problem at a time. <laughs> Well, the next two. Fifty y to the fifth. Sorry, negative five. Y to the negative five, all over forty five. X to the negative three, all of this squared. 
Born. Two X, Y to the negative two to a negative three power uh, times four. X to the fourth, Y to the negative second. So, after so right here, a lot like this, except it's a positive, it's not a negative power, or a lot like number three, or a lot like number six, right there on the um, fist brackets. Number four, right here. Again, we did a modified version where I put in some numbers. So you would have to handle the two in front and the four in front right there. So when you're taking your quiz, you want to find on the quiz prep, which one looks like this question I have to do right now? And then what steps did we do on that quiz prep? And apply it to the one you're about to do. And you got to get all that practice done because when it comes to the test, you don't have that in front of you. You have to be able to just do it as if you're, you knew it all. Which, that's the whole point. So in here, I kept heart of Simplify what's inside the parentheses first. Order of operations. Simplify this before you square something. Okay? So 50 and 45 has a common factor of a 5. You got 5 times 10, and you have 5 times 9. So the 5s are going to reduce, so in the fraction... 10 is the numerator, 9 is the denominator. Simplify negative exponents. If the exponents are negative, reciprocal. They're going to flip. So the y to the negative fifth is going to flip down. Y to the positive five. And the x to the negative three is going to flip up. X to the positive three. And then we square everything. Everything in the parentheses is reduced to lowest terms. You can't reduce 10 and 9 anymore. There's nothing else we can, reduce, we can do. With. X to the third and Y to the fifth, they're not the same base. You can't do, go any further with that. Everything is simplified on the inside. The only thing left is to square everything. So this is where I hope you're going to go. This is where you need to be. 10 squared, 100. X to the third squared, power to a power x to the sixth, all over 9 to the second power is an 81. y to the fifth squared, power to a power, 5 times 2, y to the 10th, done. But it started with the order of operations and doing what was in the parentheses first. <laughs> A smaller byte of what's inside. Everything got squared. 10 gets squared. X cubed gets squared. 9 gets squared. Y to the fifth gets squared. There's the 100. There's the 81. Power to a power. X to the six. Power to a power. Y to the 10. Now, in a question like this, I saw final answers that had no X anymore. Sorry, no Y anymore. How do the lies disappear? You know why? Because handwriting, when they wrote down this next step, it was kind of like, all right, let's do it. X to the fifth down here. Or they just changed everything arbitrarily into all X. Okay. Now, 
Have, have any of you ever had like gone in for a surgery or anything? No. Whatever. When I had my rotator cuff done, second, pretty second. They make sure in pen, in like in a magic marker, this arm, awkward, you know, this one. And when you're about to go under the anesthesia. So, what are we doing today? Are you going to return my, my rotator? Uh, which arm? So, they're asking me again because they don't want to be liable for it. Well, be consistent. I'm not just changing everyone. Once you write it, maybe read it, which is something I gotta learn how to do when I write essays. Once I write it, I'm done. When I was in college and we had at UCLA as an engineering major, we had free tutoring, just like you have free tutoring here through different organizations. And I took one of my essays then and I said, Well, when you do the second, when you do the rewrite, well, what do you mean? It's done. I don't do rewrites. I wrote it last night at three o'clock in the morning. When am I going to have time to do a rewrite? So that's something I had to change. What I did was I married somebody who could actually understand and do the rewrite for me, or at least get into my head about, listen, what you're saying right here is not making any sense. Can we fix this up? And she did a lot of my editing. I wrote out my thesis for my master's, but she typed it up and did all the formatting. And you know what? Let's get some ideas and put them in the right order first because you're just blabbering here. Okay. Just like when I first asked her out, do you think you might like to send me sometime go on a go out sometime? It's like kind of stumble. Which, you know, I was still playing off because it was cool. All right. Everybody in here, nothing can be done. If you want to flip, you can, but it's a negative three anyway. So what I would hope you do is, you see, you got two to a negative three. You're going to have an X to the negative three. Power to a power, multiply. Negative two times negative three, that's Y to a positive six. So all I did was raise everything to the negative third power. Over here, there is no exponent, so this is simplified. So I'm just going to write it back out. We've got 4 times x to the 4 times y to the negative 7. And we know we're multiplying, you know, left to right. So a lot of people just doing 2 to the negative 3 without flipping it first. And two to the negative three, I've seen negative six. I saw, let's ignore the negative completely. Two to the third is eight, and they just wrote eight. So negative exponents are going to flip down, going down over, going down over. So right here, we have a two to the positive three. We have an x to the positive three. Stays put, that's a positive six. The four stays put times the four. X to the fourth stays put. X to the fourth. Negative seven is going to flip down. This is Y to the seven. So, one more step for the answer. We never write Y then four then X. We put the number first. So this is a four. We have our x to the fourth alphabetically. Then we have a y to the sixth. So that's what we have in the numerator. In the denominator, two to the third is an eight. X to the third, one to seven. Now it's all ready to finish. And if you want to go from this red right here into this blue, that's you can do that. You know it's two to the negative third. So you know it's going to go down to the denominator and you're going to cube it. So it's one over two to the third, one over. So we simplify. Four goes into eight two times. So that's a two. X to the fourth over X to the third. The numerator is a big power. 4 minus 3, we're left with x to the first. 
The Y to the six over the Y to the seven. The denominator has a bigger power. So the Y is going to be in the denominator. Y to the six goes into the Y to the seven, the Y to the first. So in the numerator, you just have X. Down below, you have two, and you have a Y. And these bonus, they won't actually do most of our semester. So the bonus example is bonus example number one. Five to the five x over five to the x. And bonus example number two. Five to the five x minus two times five to the seven x minus four. But I believe one quiz had this one and the other quiz had that one. So rules of exponents. When we divide and subtract the exponents, that first bonus is exactly like this one, the pi, the pi problem, the pi. Five x, five to the five x, five to the x, pi to the nine x over pi to the ten x. When we divide, we subtract the exponents. So ten x minus nine x, we ended up with one over pi to a one x. Over here. The numerator has a bigger exponent, so it's equal to five to this five x minus one x. Well, five x take away one x is five to the four x. Done. Five x minus one x is four x. You wouldn't even need to show this word because the whole idea is a final rule. Okay. And that second one, when we multiply, we add the exponent. So this is on the five, not 25. You don't multiply and add the powers, you just uh, add the exponent. This 5x minus 2. Plus this 7x minus 4. So when you combine like terms, 5x plus 7x, we get a 5 to a 12x. Negative 2 minus 4, that's a minus 6. So if you wrote it neatly like that, perfectly fine. If you're worried about being neat, it wouldn't hurt to put it in parentheses just like the one that's given. But all we do is add the exponents. And the
On the other example, number nine, no ten. So here, simplify inside the parentheses first. Now, you can go ahead and multiply the numerator x to the 8th times x to the 4th if you want. I'm going to get everything simplified before I do that. And the only thing it means is, since this is a negative exponent, I'm going to flip it up. So in the parentheses, I don't have a fraction anymore. There's nothing in the denominator. Does nothing flip down. We have an x to the 8 over 5 times an x to the 4 over 5 times an x to the positive 3 over 5. And the whole thing is going to get raised to the third. Now, you could raise everything to the third right now, but it would just make a mess because the denominator is there's a five. But look at the fact that inside the denominator is a five, a little exponent. We add the exponents. It's going to be a single x to this eight over five plus four over five plus three over five. When you multiply the same base, you add their powers still to the third. And here's the good news of that problem versus over here. That one, the denominators are all five. We don't have to get a common denominator. Here, that's what we have to get, get a common denominator. So we add them up. We get x to the 8 plus 4 is 12, 12 plus 3. This is 15 over 5, and we still got a cubic. Simplify. If you can simplify all of this, do it. What's 15 divided by 5? 3. 3. So inside, this is x to the third. And now we're going to finally cube that power to the power, 3 times 3, x to the ninth. So this is just x to a ninth. Question. I question about uh, the bonus, uh, bonus number one, the last one, the uh, what's it, five, uh, five, five, uh, minus two, nine, five, six, six. Okay, yeah. Um, you wouldn't add both those fives together. I really would multiply both those fives together after so, you divide it. No, because two times two is not four to the second. You don't multiply the twos and add the powers. You only add the power. When you multiply, you add the exponents. So the base is two. You add that one plus one, and you get two squared. That's why two times two is two squared. Instead of multiply the twos, add the powers, oh. not the same thing. Okay. So I'm not, I wouldn't multiply the fives and add their exponents. All I do is add the exponents. Okay. So okay. Like right here, I'm not going to multiply these threes and make it a 27. All I can do is add the exponents. Because that's rule number one. When the bases are the same, you add the powers. So it's one three to this eight over 25 plus that nine over four plus this three over 20. So now I just got to make it one fraction. Yeah, you got to be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide fractions. And if you're struggling with that, either find yourself a good counselor that can figure out how to help you learn it. Because right now we're at this stage where we cannot like give a whole class on how to add fractions. Office hours, STEM center, tutoring, whatever. But you got to understand how fractions work. We cannot add these unless the denominators are the same. So three to the something plus something plus something. I need a common denominator for 25, 4, and 20. So if it was just 25 and 4, it would be 100. 
and we need a denominator that's 100. Okay, because that's the first number that 25 and 4 both go into. So I can convert these into denominators of 100. Question is, does it work for 20? Yeah, 20 can go into 100. So the common denominator for these three denominators, I need to change them into hundreds. This needs to be a hundred. This needs to be a hundred. This needs to be a hundred. Common denominator. Now we convert the whole fraction. To change this 25 into 100, you would multiply the numerator and denominator by 4. 4 times 25 is how we change to 100. The numerator is 32. And what we just did was, it's the same, it's the same fraction. It's equivalent. 32 over 100 is the same as an 8 25 but now we'll be able to actually add those two. To make four become 100, you would have to multiply this one by 25 over 25. So the numerator, 25 times nine, is 225. And the last one, 20, to change 20 into 100, we're gonna to have to multiply by five over five. 20 times 5 is how we make the 100. So the numerator is now 15. And I'm just going to show you this little extra step here. When you actually add these fractions, you add the numerators 32 plus 225 plus 15, but it's all over a single hundred now. You add or subtract the numerators to keep your denominator. So 32 plus 225 is 257. 257 plus 15 is 272. This adds up to 3 to the 272 over 100. Always simplify your fractions to lowest terms. 272 and 100 are both even. So I'm going to put it up here so it's a little bit big. Three to the 272 over 100. At least they're both even. I may not know exactly what goes into each one, the biggest number, but I know they're even. So this would be two times. 136 over 2 times 50. So that reduces. Now I have 3 to the 136 over 50. Well, they're still both even. So if they're both even still, this would be 3 to the 2 times 68 over 2 times 25. And you can reduce the two to one more time. So the final answer is three to the 68 over 25, because 68 over 25 does not reduce. And that's the best thing can do. There's not there's not any specific questions where you have to do the rules of exponents for the class. But to do the problems that we have to do, we need to know the rules of exponents because we're going to have exponents all over. The place. What you need to do is, even though it's not going to count towards your grade, make sure you go back and try to do this for yourself. Read them, revisit it, and know your rule. The two quiz preps, the quiz you just got back, you want to trade a quiz with somebody else to see other problems. It's just practice where you, you need to be here. The mind has to stay sharp. Math is a muscle. Well, your brain's a muscle, but math exercises that muscle. And when you don't do it, just like, you know what? I'm going to take next week off. I won't, I'm not going to go back to the, I said that back in 2017. I've been back to the gym since. So if you stop working out that muscle, it'll atrophy. The rules will go away. 
You know, if you're Homer Simpson, your brain can only hold so much information at a time. Okay. That's what he said. You know, remember, Marge, when you made me memorize something, and then I forgot that uh, drinking and driving is illegal. You know, The Simpsons is one of the best shows on TV that relates to math. There are so many math jokes in the Simpsons. There's a whole website, Math and the Simpsons, from season one on. Because the writers from The Simpsons were from Harvard, Yale, Princeton. And a few of them had degrees in mathematics. So that was our family time when our kids were young. We'd pile on the bed, watch The Simpsons on a Sunday night, because I'm a good father. And I'm sitting here laughing my butt off on some high level joke, and everybody's kind of looking at me going, There he goes again. I guess this is between him and home. Okay. All right. If I only had all the money back that I spent on lottery, because I haven't won yet, and if I only had all the money back that I spent on my Simpsons collectible, now okay. okay. I think what I want to do is, we're going to do a couple of these right now, but I want to leave this up to the beginning of 10 o'clock as well. We left off using the formula for slope and coupon. Completing an ordered pair. Do we understand how to read what this question wants from us? They just talk about math sometimes. I don't even know what they want. There's all this stuff on the page. I don't even know what they want me to do. So we want to get through that language. So when you read a problem, you have a clue as to how we're going to approach it. This one. We're going to have to be solving equations here, there, and fractions will be a part of life. Fractions are alive just like Football is like on oh, Ted Lasso. Does anybody watch Ted Lasso? Yeah. Talked about earlier that visceral reaction, that anxiety that happens when you see math, especially fractions. It's within your power to undo the fractions. You don't have to solve this problem with fractions if you did. Don't write this down, but if I did, 5 over 3, x plus 9 over 4, equal 11 over 6. If I'm solving for x, I would have to subtract 9 over 4 first. And I 5 thirds x equals whatever this is. I'm not going to worry about it, but whatever that is. And then we have to divide both sides by 5 thirds. If you want to work in Fraction. And that's fine. It's in your capability to not deal with fractions. And here's the key. We want to undo the fractions. And the way you undo fractions is you're going to multiply every term by the least common denominator. The reason we have fractions or what makes this problem even I'm from that. The reason why we have fractions is because there's a denominator. It's a fraction because it's five over a three, nine over a four, and then 11 over a 6. So we want to undo the denominators, undo the fraction. The denominators are division. 5 divided by 3 times 1, plus 9 divided by 4, plus equals 11 divided by 6. So we're going to undo with multiplication, because down below those are divisions. 
if we don't think ahead to undo five thirds, you would have to multiply by three. And yeah, that three would reduce, and we just have five x. If I multiply one thing by three, I got to multiply everybody by three. The problem is three does not undo the four. It doesn't reduce. So three is not the least common denominator. I need a number, one number, that three is going to reduce, and four will go into, and six will go into. One number that will undo all of those denominators. Well, well. And before you start panicking about three, four, and six, don't worry about trying to find the least common denominator for three things. You start with two. If it was just a three and a four, the only thing that would undo a three and a four would be a 12. Because three goes into 12 evenly and four goes into 12. Evenly. And how we're getting it is we're looking at the multiple. Three times one, three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12, three times five is 15, and then you have 18. These are the multiples of three, and then the multiples of four. Four times one, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, and then right there, three and four both go into 12. So if I had a three and a four only, I just need 12. But now you take the 12, and we still have the six. So now you look at, yeah, 12 and the six. 12, 12 goes into 12, and then you have 12, uh, 24, and 36, and 48, and keep on going. But six times one, six times two is, oh, the first number that six and 12 can go into is a 12. So what will undo everybody is just a 12. Okay, it doesn't have to be huge, it just has to be the first one, the smallest number. It's gonna make your life easier. But watch what happens if I multiply by 12. This three goes into that 12, four times. We're left with four times five, that's a 20x. Plus, this four goes into that 12 three times. We're left with three times nine, that's a 27. It's a 12. This six goes into that 12 two times, two times 11 on this side, we have a 22. No more fractions. So now we have an equation where their fractions are, been, they've been undone. The ratios that involve those fractions are still there. It's just been rewritten so it appeals better. Now when we solve, we subtract one second. And we're left with 20x is equal to negative five. And then 20 times X to undo multiplication, we divide. Divide both sides 20. Always simplify the answer. X is equal to, is a positive or negative? Negative. And then how is five over 20 then simple? I, I went over four. What over four? One four. Because you have five times one, and this is four times five. So we're looking for one four. Negative one. Just because we undid the fraction doesn't mean that the answer still will be a fraction. But it's a lot easier to get there because manipulating this is a lot less frightening than trying to do this. So one of the major first steps when you solve equations, if you can undo fractions, do it. And you know how we would check our answer? Whenever you're solving, how do you check your answer? Before you walk out the door, how do you know if you got it right or wrong? 
to plug it in. So according to our calculations over there, if we plug in negative one fourth, and you don't plug it into this, we got negative one fourth because we did this to it. Maybe we did something wrong. We need to see if the negative one fourth actually solves the problem that we were working on. So five over three times negative one fourth plus nine over four is supposed to be 11 over six. Positive times a negative is a negative. Five over three times one fourth is five over 12. And then plus, well, if I'm going to add these two together, I'm going to need a common denominator. So it's nine over four equals 11 over six. So what common denominator would be for a 12 and 4? That's how I make the 12. It has to be a... I can't change 12 into a 4. I want to actually combine these together. Plus, my common denominator would be a 12. So 5 over 12 is good to go. To change this into a 12, I'm going to plug it through a 3. 27. Negative 5 plus 27 is 22 over 12. And that's 2 times 11, 2 times 6. When I plug in the negative 1 fourth, I end up with this side equaling 11 over 6. So the answer that we found works. You can always just punch it up on the calculator. Five over three times, negative 0.25 if you want. Or if you use parentheses, parentheses, negative, uh, positive, sorry, negative one. Point. Okay? And you just want to see, do I get what's on the other side? All right, I'm on back at 10. And we'll do all those other ones. And for those of you just walking in, I'll give back all the other quizzes at 10.